I was introduced to your work by Brother Paul's interview, um, and it was on secularism. And this is why uh, you're kind of uniquely placed to tackle that because you studied it in terms of like post-colonialism and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, my eyes were opened to this. I don't know anything to do with that really because it's not. Um, I wouldn't say I have a deep interest in it, but I studied um, Ustad Daniel Hay Hadju's work. And I studied some of his courses, and this was two years ago um, before I interviewed him, um, Alhamdulillah. And he's like really nice, mashallah. I've got nothing but positive things to say about him, even though he's criticized and people have one uh, kind of view of him. But from my personal interactions, how he was on the interview pre and post, like mashallah, I can only say good things. And it's like a gestalt switch. When I first learned about um, like the difference in thinking that uh, modernism like everything new is good right. and like how the difference in like ontology and epistemology it really like opened my eyes and which is why I sometimes um, post videos about this kind of thing as well even though it's not strictly self-development stuff um, because it's more important I've mentioned it before in terms of it, it gives you a better frame from which to build upon as in if you've not even got that frame then self-development for what yes and um yeah, so I don't know if you had anything to add to that. Well, that's a huge problem, uh, honestly, I think for Muslims in this day and age is that they're fairly uncritical of modernity and what actual modernity is. Like, for example, a Muslim will uphold as, um, a as an example of kind of uh, progress, let's say places like in the Gulf, in the Arab Gulf, like the UAE and, and Dubai and like these sort of cities that are, you know, built out of nothing. Everything's very quote unquote modern right and tailored towards entertainment and all these sorts of things you'll find a lot of a lot of muslims speak very very highly yet yet everybody understands that most of this stuff is built on slave labor and very unethical kind of practices and racialized practices and prejudice and it's all there not even to speak of the the politics of what nations like that do in the name of islam and normalization with israel and everything else People act like you can just take out one thing and not take the whole package, right? They act as if we can just take the big fancy skyscrapers and the amusement parks and not also take the slave labor and the racism and the migrant worker crisis and all these sorts of things. Uh, they're actually very, very intertwined, right? Uh, everything that, and that's not to say that, you know, we're not necessarily saying like anti-technology or anything, but, uh, what somebody produces, it issues forth from their ethics and from their paradigm and from their episteme, right? Like all of what we see, it glitters and we're impressed by it. But, you know, what's its carbon footprint? What is it doing to the environment? How much is it undermining human life? How many trees were chopped down, right? How many ecosystems were destroyed? And then we want to say, like, this is what Islam looks like. <sighs> To me, I think we've, we've drunk the Kool-Aid a little bit too much when it comes to, you know, the modern West. We, we see these things and we think that this is progress without realizing that if you don't bring Islamic ethics along with it, it's not progress at all. It's actually destruction. It's actually extermination. It's actually barbarity, right? In a different way, even though nobody kind of understands it like that, right? So, uh, you know, we need to be, we need to be very, very careful. How many folks, because a modern capitalism is very, is very much about convenience and the ways that even housing and neighborhoods are constructed and cities are constructed. It's meant to kind of hide the externalities, right? The poor, the homeless, the addicts, all these sorts of things, the underbelly of these sorts of different societies that you don't see it's out of sight. Well, that's by design that it's out of sight, right? But we have to reckon with it. We have to reckon with it. If, if this sort of, uh, if these two sorts of things can't be separated, that producing one produces the other, then we have to ask ourselves, is this really an Islamic model for how to, to make a city, for how to develop an economy, for how to allocate resources, for how to interact with the environment? And it feels to me, it feels to me like we're a little bit too starstruck by models of success and progress that have been kind of developed by the West. Right. Some people will be like, you know, oh, well, we just have to, the Muslim world just needs factories and we just need, you know, uh, to get enough weapons and to get a, a bigger military enough that, you know, we're going to be able to compete. Well, 
if we're competing with the most ruthless societies on being ruthless, even if we win, what did we win? Right? It's like you take, I, I always go back to the atomic bomb and we, we talked about this, you know, with Paul, you know, the United States, the only nation in the world to have dropped an atomic bomb on people. Okay. Eviscerated it. tons of people, innocent people, women, children, elderly, right? Religious people. And to this day has not even said, sorry, <laughs> first of all, let alone, uh, been held accountable for this sort of action. Okay. Is that the model of power and success that we're going after? Do we want really to produce a Muslim nation that is capable of that type of barbarity, or that type of unethical behavior? I would say no. Right. So, you know, these sorts of things, I think Muslims need to, it's hard because, you know, you see the Muslim nations, they're quote unquote, undeveloped or underdeveloped. They're not quite as, you know, there's lots of problems. There's lots of bribery and corruption and these sorts of things. And then people look at the West, oh, they're so organized, so modern and so, uh, you know, uh, fair and just and all these things. Hey, every society has good and bad, but we don't realize that we also have those things in our tradition. The best of it comes organically from us then, even if we've gotten away from it a little bit. And in order to recapture it, we don't have to imitate. We don't have to ape somebody else's completely maybe unethical formation, or at least the things that they've done that's tied up with very, very unethical things. Um, it's a big tangent, but I feel strongly about those sorts of issues.